So the first part of the class basically is um, the structure and basic features of the app. Focus on HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Part two, uh, porting our web app to a mobile dev environment, or IDE. Continue HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Then we're going to put in jQuery and jQuery mobile. And then part three, adding advanced features and uh, <laughs> distribution promotion of the app. So we're going to continue uh, all the aforementioned right here. And then we're going to add PouchDB. That's the database. All of these things you can look up. You can go to the official documentation and learn all about it. You can preview what we're going to talk about. PouchDB.com, jQuery.com. You can go look it up before we get to it. But in general, you see how we're adding uh, from here to more to more. And basically, in this first part, um, our IDE or a coding app, a coding software. You can use whichever one you like, but we're going to use here Notepad++. Other options include, of course, Brackets and Sublime and Atom and what's another coding app you might like? VS Code. What's that? VS, yeah, VS Code uh, for Microsoft. Anything else? Visual? Yeah, Visual, VS, VS Code. Visual Studio, etc. So if you like um, to do your own, if you like, if you're used to coding in your own web coding environment, you, you can use it. Uh, you can use uh, things, I suppose, even like Eclipse, uh, I, I guess uh, Xcode and Dreamweaver, I suppose. Uh, so because it's going to be focused on the web aspect of the project. Then, eventually, in part two, we're going to go into Visual Studio. That one is then going to be able to be dealing with, oh, I should also put over here, Cordova. We will be able to actually use Visual Studio. Visual Studio nowadays can use Cordova. And Visual Studio is eventually the software, the IDE, that we're going to use uh, to convert or compile or whatever we want to call it, uh, our web apps into <coughs> apps for devices. Uh, there is, of course, the big enterprise version of Visual Studio, which is expensive. I believe the the, the name of it at the moment, I think it's Visual Studio Community Edition. I think it used to be called Visual Studio Express. That's Visual Studio Community Edition, which has a great price of uh, free. So people might have known about Visual Studio for a long time. It's 20-year-old software, 25-year-old software. But often in terms of making uh, apps, like, like Windows apps and such, uh, Microsoft saw the writing on the wall in that devices are ruling the landscape more than regular computers. So uh, v uh, Visual Studio uh, Community Edition is out there for communities, for us, for us smaller developers for free to make apps that are open source, that are um, uh, easy to, to edit. So basically, one more layer on, on top of things is that we're going to use Visual Studio to then write our code and test our apps and, and all of that. And then part three, we, we continue using uh, Visual Studio and uh, create developer accounts for distribution. So very general. We'll get into all the details. That's what we uh, should be covering in our in our three months. Does that make sense? Any questions? 
Okay, so if we're first uh, going to do our, our web project of our app, and we're going to use Notepad++, which I recommend free download, uh, let's see how our sort of environment of how we would be doing this would be. Uh, on your desktop or on your flash drive, go ahead and create a folder. Name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it today's date. So I'm going to go over to my flash drive. Um, however you want to organize yourself. I've got a folder for all the classes I teach. So maybe on your flash drive, you make a folder for this class. And then inside of there, I want to make a folder for today's work, 2018-06-12. Call it whatever you want. Name it however you want. Uh, we're going to do our work in that folder. Um, we're going to do a little practice coding today. We're not going to get to the hardcore of the app until Thursday, but I want to kind of get a sense of this is how the class will run. Uh, I want to get a sense of uh, get a sense of the pace of the class and the level of the class and such. So we'll do a basic coding lecture today. Uh, so I've got a brand new folder where my code will exist. And then I'm going to go to the Start menu and load up the Notepad++ app. So I'm going to start and search for Notepad++, not Notepad, Notepad++. Uh, if you want to use brackets or anything like that, I believe we've got those installed here too. We've got brackets. What else do we have here? Dreamweaver. We have Visual Studio also, of course. But let's open up Notepad++. How many of you have ever used Notepad++ before? A few people. OK, how many of you have ever used Visual Studio before? A few people. How many of you have used brackets before? A few people. So it's kind of varied all over the place. Um, any way you want to do your code is, is going to work. Command prompt, Vim Emacs, sure, have fun with that. Uh, we're going to uh, do this. So Notepad++, uh, file new, file save as. And I'm going to save a brand new file onto my flash drive in the folder I just created. And I will also call it today's date, sure. You can call it index if you want, if you're used to that. 2018.612.html. Make sure your save as type is also HTML. So we're creating a brand new blank document. I'm going to save it into my flash drive, call it whatever you want, .html. Make sure the save as type is also HTML. If you've never done any coding before, this will be brand new. If you have done HTML coding, this might be a little basic, but uh, we'll take it advanced, of course. Uh, so we're going to type our very first command of HTML. Um, HTML is one of many programming languages, technically a markup language. It's a programming language. It'll let us program a, a, a website traditionally. But we can use this language to also program our apps. So I'm going to write code. I'm going to explain the code. I might write notes in my code. The very first thing I've got here is the uh, angle bracket, shift comma, exclamation point, doc type, h space HTML greater than. So I'm about to create an HTML document. Uh, what kind of document, perhaps? What version? HTML5. We're going to be creating an HTML5 compliant document. So just for our notes over here. We will be writing HTML5. We could do the, this in other versions, you know, X, HTML, Transitional 1.1, whatever. You can write it in different versions, but we're going to use often the most modern code. We're going to write our HTML command. And if you're very new to HTML, most of the time we have pairs 
code, pairs of tags. I'm up here saying the type of document I'm about to create is an HTML document, an HTML5 document. You do not write the number five. And specifically then, okay, we're gonna mark that this project starts here. The HTML starts here and ends here. Notice we've got a slash. So everything should exist between here. It'd be a good idea to uh, write a note here. Does anyone know how do we write notes in HTML? The asterisk is JavaScript or CSS. We use angle bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash, space, dash, dash, greater than. This is an HTML comment. And our main program starts here. So as we go throughout the course and we get to the more complex stuff about debugging and all of that, definitely, obviously, if you're having any trouble, you want to raise your hand, I'll help you out. You can ask a neighbor. If you would help a neighbor, remember a little basic code right here that we're creating an HTML project. Next line, head, head, and then body. So basically our project is an HTML project. It has a head block, a body block. Uh, again, you can I, I'm going to be writing notes, but you are free to write notes in your code whenever you want. It's very helpful for you to make notes to yourself. So I'm going to make a note here that says head block or metadata. What does that mean? Well, we'll cover this stuff in more detail, but in very basic general terms, we're creating our basic structure of our project. Over here, we can say main visible uh, part of our app.
it's tradition that when you're writing any language, your very first project, your very first proof of concept is to make the app say, hello world. So we're going to continue that tradition. Because this is going to just get us into the habit of we're going to write our code, we're going to save our code, we're going to run our code. We're going to see the result. This is obviously a very basic project. It's not going to be very fancy at all, but eventually, yes, it'll be pretty powerful. We're going to have a login system. We're going to have multiple user account system. We're going to have a way to take photos, uh, scan barcodes, save to a database. We, we're going to get there eventually. Day one might be very slow for a lot of people. Day two, we're definitely going to pick up the pace. But if I wanted to see my result, notice in my case, this, this uh, icon here is red. I have not saved my file yet. <laughs> So you've also got an asterisk on the top left I haven't saved yet. So you can hit the Save icon, you can do Control S, or you can go to File, Save. So the thing that we want to do is we want to remember, save your work, and then we can run the code. And at the moment, we're going to be testing it in a web browser. We've got the, these, the, all of these right here. You can choose any one you'd like. Since it's a simple web project, we just want to run it in a browser. You want to go to Run Menu and launch one of those that you want, any one of them. I just hit Firefox, it's the first one on the list. And so I want to see what all my hard work looks like so far. There we go, my HTML code has been processed by the web browser and it says Hello World. Let's pause there. Did it work? Did it not work? Anyone need a little help? So, okay. That says, hello world. If this is a web project. Oftentimes, in a web project, in a website, don't you have some sort of title or message up on the tag, uh, the tab up here? So we want to write something over here. This is going to happen in the head block. As I said, all the visible stuff in the main web browser is in body, while metadata, stuff outside of the body, is in the head. I want to write the title of this project in the tab that's going to go in the head. And that requires a tag, a code of title. And I'll say day one. Let me write some more notes here. Most HTML code or tags have a pair. And we've seen that. Body slash body. HTML slash HTML. Title slash title. There's a, um, there's a few that are uh, special cases. One of them is that doc type. That one doesn't have a pair. And we'll see a few others. Most HTML code has a pair. I'm going to press Enter to move it to its own line and say, you can write the code uh, broken into different lines or in one line, whatever you like for what, you can do it however you want. And I'm saying that because I wrote body, I pressed enter, I wrote stuff. Here I wrote title on the same line, and then I entered title. That would have been equivalent, is same as if I had done it like this. That's equivalent. I started the title tag, I started the title markup, and I marked this is a title, this is the end of the title. That way and the other way would work the same way. Why would we one use one versus the other? We'll talk about. But just for the notes here, uh, you usually have pairs of tags. And it's usually OK to leave it on one line or multiple lines, depending. <clears throat> so I added a little bit more to the project. Uh, up here, it says it hasn't been saved yet. I want to save it. I'm going to run it. 
I want to run it again. Here's the latest version. Now, up in the title, it says day one. One thing that I would note here, if you do run, what I like about that is that it does give you a new tab to kind of show you here's the old version, here's the new version. You could, of course, write your code, save it, and simply refresh your browser. That's exactly the same. But by, especially if you're a beginner, by doing run every time, you get a new version of your code to kind of see how did it look before, how is it now, how is it progressing. Or just refresh it, reload it, and you get the latest code, the latest output. Okay, so does anyone know what HTML stands for? Hyper text markup language. H T M L. Let me do it backwards. So L for language. A computer language. Does anyone know when it was invented? Around 1989. It's not that old. It's going to be 30 years next year, and that's not that old. Computers have been around since the 40s, versions in the 30s, analytical engine back in the 1800s. So this language is not that old, but this language has changed the world. Uh, going on Facebook, doing your online banking, that's all on websites with HTML language that is out there for anyone to use. We're creating HTML, same as the inventor 30 years ago. So it's just a language. Markup. The M for markup. You mark your structure of your project. And I might jump back and forth between saying project and app and website. It's going to be all interchangeable for a little while. This is obviously a website so far. It's not quite an app yet, but it's our project. Uh, and so basically, we're marking. What we've marked from here to here is this is the title. Show it up on the title bar. Here's the main body. We marked it here. We marked it here. Show it in the body. That's the M for markup. And then the H and the T, basically, is links. Because when this was invented in 1989, it was solidified into a language about what if I can have a document? And what if I can click something in the document to go to another document? Nowadays, obvious. I can click something, go somewhere. I watch, I watch one cat video, I want to watch another. I can easily click and go to someplace else. 1989 and before, that didn't quite exist. There were different versions and such, but it was then combined and codified and put out to the world. HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. And the first websites were very boring, just black and gray websites with text. You click this link, it takes you to some other document, some more content. Then it got more advanced. Uh, design. Well, I wanted to. I want to put cool colors. I want to make columns in the document. Uh, I want to make drop shadows. CSS. What does CSS stand for? Cascading style sheets. So basically, the design. Colors, fonts, um, columns, and and such. CSS. We'll go back over here and say HTML. Basically, structure. I want to have a screen in my app. That's the login screen. So I set it up in HTML. I want to have then the logout screen. It's another screen in HTML. Well, I want the login screen to look nice. For the button to have a drop shadow, for the button to be centered on screen, that's CSS. 
I want the design of it to be controlled CSS. I want to press the button login and actually check my password and then take me over to the welcome screen. That's the interactivity part. JavaScript. JavaScript stands for just another, just kidding, it doesn't stand for anything. Right? Just another valuable automatic seance. I don't know, doesn't stand for anything. Uh, JavaScript, the interactivity. It does something. You click a button, something happens. A sound plays. You click a button, you, you, uh, your spaceship uh, shoots a laser. Uh, you press a button, you edit uh, your, your, your title of your comic. Uh, it's the interactivity. So these are all of the languages we're going to use. At the moment, we're focusing on HTML in this file. And HTML is uh, the basic structure. So let's say I want then um, I want to make the hello world message uh, nice and big and prominent and important looking. The structure is that this will be um, something that stands out. In this piece of paper, even if you can't read it, there are parts of the text that stand out. This over here, this over here. It's a heading to the document. It, it stands out. It's big, it's bold, it's important. So we can write some markup. H1. You can also write your comments in the same line. Heading number one. Big and important. You save it, you run it, you see the result. A moment ago, the hello world without any extra markup looked like that. And then now with more markup, more HTML looks like that. So we've used a tag for a specific task. I want to make this big. I want to set this as a link. I want to put an image. There's a tag for a task. <clears throat> well, in this document, I also have regular text. I have like chunks of text. I have paragraphs of text. So I've got a tag that creates paragraphs. P tag. This one, um, I'm going to break it into multiple lines. Now, one thing about using a code editor uh, is usually it's going to help you with color coding, and it might have like connecting lines to show you this connects to that. If you're using a more basic code editor, you might not have that stuff. But for example, here in, in um, this is our first day of coding. If I were to write this bit of text here, I put it into a paragraph. I've marked that it's a paragraph. And if I were to click on the tag of heading one, it would highlight both of the pairs, especially when there's a pair of, of tags. A civilized code editor should then show you where does it start, where does it stop? Where did you start the marking, and where did you end the markup? Where did you start the markup, where did you end the markup? This is one of the subtle things that will help you in debugging. I've clicked on the paragraph. What's happening? Nothing. It's not finding its pair. Why? You need the slash. Now they highlight. So even basic things like that, that's a way to figure out how is my code working or not. Sometimes people ask, well, the, this, this looks red. Do I have an error? No, you don't really rely that a color means an error or anything like that. Uh, it's that this particular coding environment theme or scheme at the moment uses these colors to delineate these elements. The comments are green. The tags seem to be blue. Uh, non or human readable coding seems to be black. Uh, any other colors up here? And then when we would do these highlights, they turn a, a kind of a purple. And I didn't see the purple. I didn't see them connect because I had a mistake there. 
So I'm zoomed in for you to, e to view it easily. But when I'm zoomed out like this, and I'm seeing a big wall of text, this is 28 lines. Eventually, our final, final, final app will be about 1,000 lines of code across HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So you know, a small app. And when you've got a huge wall of text, even basic things like color coding and code collapsing and all of that can really help you debug. All right, this is our first day of coding. Enter. My current level of HTML experience is blank. Write what your, what you believe your current level of experience in HTML is. But I will learn more. Press enter and then another line, but I will learn more. Save it and run it. Check out your paragraph. See what you've created so far. Okay, well, if I'm writing this and I've got three separate lines of code, and if I save it and I run it, I was expecting three separate lines of code. They're all on the same line. Uh, this is, again, HTML. We write the HTML, then we have the interpreter, or the compiler. We have what converts the raw code into something human-readable. Uh, this slash p doesn't mean anything to a person. It's gibberish. But that looks like real content. So the web browser interpreted the language and showed you a result. But I wrote, I pressed enter and I wrote, I thought I wrote three different lines. Well, HTML ignores things like enters or even spaces. I'm going to tab this over because I would like my paragraph tabbed over. Well, when I see the result again, it's not tabbed over. This shows that there's the right tag for the right task. I would like it to indent, or at the very least at the moment, I would like it to be on separate lines. So we have a tag for that. We're going to break the line. Now here's where we get into our first argument, depending how you learn the language. Uh, you, As I said earlier, you can have these tags uh, you're coding on, on one line, or you can break it into multiple lines. You know, all of this is valid, however you, you want to write it. The right answer is, perhaps, how did you learn it? Keep doing what you're used to. Perhaps a, another right answer is, well, how is everyone else on my team doing it? If I'm in a development environment with three or four other coders, everyone hopefully is writing the same kind of style of code because then you're going to get into trouble about, well, you didn't put your code in the right place that I was expecting, and it's broken. When we get into more complex things like JavaScript, and then we have to figure out where do we put our curly braces, OK, well, there's another argument. So the answer is basically how you're comfortable with, how you learn, how your team is doing. And what I mean here is, OK, break. Did I write that correctly? Two things are happening here. Break is one of the tags that does not have a pair. But there's two ways to write it, like this, or the way that I wrote it here. And they're both correct. Um, it's a self-closing tag. So notice how it's written, angle brackets, break, space, slash, OK? I broke the line. I moved. I stopped this line. I broke it. Next line. I stop this line, I break it, next line. Does it matter that it's not consistent? Well, that's what I'm about to, to cover. One moment. Um, so the result is both are the same. As to answering consistency, this is then which is important to you. For me, yes, I want to be consistent. No, what I mean is that if you are writing it dr slash, and then the other one is dr and you do not have the space in between, does the computer understand that you are writing it in two different uh, styles? Yeah. That particular code is a very basic code, a very basic tag, so it the, the browser interprets it correctly. It knows both. 
I'm not really going to vary by. You could do it this way or this way. That's too confusing. I'm usually going to focus on one way, which is the right way because I'm teaching it. <laughs> but again, if you learn it in a different way in another class, that's the right way too. It's just be consistent in however you, you want to be. So if you learn this in another class with the slash, great. I'm not going to write the slash because this is an extra two bytes of data. And this adds up and adds up and adds up. And yeah, two bytes is nothing. But then if you've got this on 50 paragraphs, 2 times 50 is some number. And then more and more and more. So both of them, if you look them up in the official specifications and such, they're both compliant. They're both correct. Notepad sees the pair. And if that matters to you in that case, great. There is no kind of pair here, so OK, it doesn't highlight, but that's not wrong. It's just that both of these are the way to do it, and I, when I write a break, I write it without the slash. It is valid. And the result of that is that I get the line breaks to the next line in the browser. Eventually, this is going to become an app, right? So if you've got your web browser maximized like that, it looks a certain way. But you can kind of play with it a little bit with a browser that's very tall and thin. And that's kind of looking like a mobile device. And eventually, we will use emulators so that it looks more and feels more like an iPhone or an Android. But here is my web project, which will eventually become an app. This is the body. This is what's going to be visible in the main part of my device. Eventually, when I get to devices, that's what's going to be visible in the in the main screen, the body. Yes? Every time you add an, an additional command, do you have to save it, or does it happen automatically? It depends on the, on the software. I think on brackets, it might be automatic. But in Notepad, just get used to you. You write your code, and then you save your code. If you ever see a little red disk there, you haven't saved it yet, so I would recommend get in the habit, write the code, save the code, and then you'll always have the latest version so that the browser shows it correctly. So um, here's a paragraph. Let's um, create another paragraph. And say this is our instructor. OK, I want to show a picture. I can create, I can show a picture. I can write the code that will show a picture. So next line, IMG, image. Some of these tags, when they were invented, they're spelled out. Body. Some of them are short. Shortcuts, P, paragraph. Some of them are shortened in a weird way. Image. It was very easy to call it image, I-M-A-G-E, but it's just I-M-G, image. Um, and the image tag, comment right here, image to display images does not have a pair, but it has attributes. extra info. We said, let's make a paragraph. So I broke it apart. It's a paragraph. Let's make a heading number one. So it showed it that way. There's like basic information built in, even though we don't have to write it. Well, how did it know black text and white background? It's all the basic specification of it all. We can, of course, change that later through CSS. But just by saying image, OK, there's going to be an image here. But it doesn't know which image. So inside of the image tag, because it's a self-sealing, a self-closing tag, you could also write it with a slash like that. But this, again, is another example where I'm going to save two bytes. And image without the slash works. But what we need then inside of the image tag, between the angle brackets, we need an attribute. We need to say the source. SRC. We need to say, what image are we talking about? The source. And that will equal, quote, end quote. Quotes are next to your enter. 
key. This is red not because it's wrong, but it's red because it's an attribute. The colors just change because of what kind of element I've created. These are HTML elements. Here is an attribute element. This is a comment element. And so if I had here the name of a picture, it'll say, let's show an image. Here's the source of the image. Show it. Go ahead and save it and run it, and what do you get? You get two things. One is I expected the I expected that the picture would be below the text. And the other is I have a broken link, a broken picture. So one is easy to fix, of course. Break. I want that on a separate line. The other one, the source of the image, well, if I had a picture in the same folder or the same place where I've saved, where I wrote the code, it should display the picture. In my folder or my desktop or wherever, I don't have a picture. I don't have that file there. So there's no picture to display. I've got pictures somewhere else in another folder. So I'd have to write the path. Something like C colon backslash pictures slash instructors slash summer slash victor. I'd have to have some sort of full path. Go to the C drive, go to this folder, go to that folder, go to that folder, find that picture. Now we have a source. That that picture and that folder does not exist, so don't type that. <laughs> the good news is, though, we can uh, also put a web address here. If we have a web address, a full address, HTTP, uh, the website slash the picture, that would, that would show a picture, too. That's not a real web address, either, so don't type that. Let's get a real picture here. Um, let's borrow one of my pictures here. If you want to go to your web browser, go to vmcinc, vmcink.net. Here's one of my websites for uh, one of my uh, businesses. I've got a, a couple pictures at the bottom of the, of the page. We can borrow one of those pictures there. Yes. How important is it if SRC is not red? Uh, it, it is. It should be important. I'll, I'll check you in a moment. But you might, you might not have uh, written your code properly elsewhere, and then it's causing your code later to not quite work. It should, at this point, be red because it's recognizing you're writing it right. But let me check you just one moment. Uh, question over here. Uh, so the address that you just showed on the screen was that the link that would, uh, you would enter as the command vmcink.net? No, you would go to the web browser, uh, type the address, and it's the picture down here. Oh, I'm going to borrow this picture. <laughs> this picture right here, depending on your web browser, I'm in Firefox. I can do right click, and I have copy image location. In Chrome, it might say like copy URL or something, copy image address. So I'm going to borrow this picture on the internet. I'm going to right click, copy image or copy uh, location. And that, and that link I will paste into the source, which is a long link. So that's the, that's the real link, a huge link. I wasn't going to have you type that, so we copied it from another website. So try that, save it and run it, and see what you get. Yes, 
result. <coughs> okay, guys over here. Questions? No? So you want to save that, and then I'm going to run it in the browser, and okay, see the picture? It's not as, it's bigger than I thought it would be. I thought I saw it the size over here. Uh, well, this is part of what we'll, we'll be covering uh, regarding CSS. Uh, you will be able to resize things, add colors and drop shadows. We'll do that in a moment, but right now we're setting up the basic structure. I want a big name title up here. I want a couple paragraphs over here. I want a picture. It's the structure. It's the purpose of the HTML. The details of colors and alignment and the icing on the cake, that's CSS. And let's say I was going to click a button, and then that was going to do something. It was going to play a, a sound. It was going to meow. So I would uh, program it in JavaScript to do that. So every language has its purpose. Technically, it's called separation of concerns. But basically, there's the right language for the right task. Uh, what's my code for structure? What's my code for design? And what's my code for interactivity? It's those three languages. So here, I've got a picture. 
We're going to resize it in a moment. But what I want to do is um, I also then want to have um, a link back to the website. Right now it's just a picture. So in this paragraph, I've written a line of text, break the line. Then I created an image. Then I, on the next line, I want to put the web address. So um, uh, we'll say visit his website. Now I haven't written the break. I haven't made this appear on its own line. And I could do it at the end of the previous line or the start of the current line. That's OK there. So I said write the line, break the line, next line. Or write this line, break this line, and then the next line. Or I could write it right here. It'll process it. The web browser will process your code from top to bottom, left to right. So it's going to go here. It's going to get to that. Break. Next line. You could even do it like this, that it's very obvious. There is a broken line there. There's an empty space there. So on the one hand, HTML is very forgiving in that you can do it in a variety of ways, which is good and bad because, well, what's the right way? They're all the right way, as long as you write the code correctly, the, the actual BR and not you know BP. As long as you write the right code, how you style it in your code here is fine. Um, for example, I could have had all of this code like this. I could have had it all like that, all to the left. That would work perfectly fine as well. The web browser will take that and process it, and it's exactly the same. But I am what I'm doing, and I apologize if I didn't say it obviously, but what I'm doing, I like to do to press tab and jump these over a little bit for readability. I can see that this piece of content is part of this paragraph because I've tabbed it over. It's that group. If I had it without tabs like that, it would work fine. But I think it then gets a little cluttered, a little hard to read. So simply tabbing that stuff over, over I think, is very helpful. So in this paragraph, I want to make this an active link. I've been working with a lot of the M of HTML and the L, because it's a language. I've been working with the markup. I've marked. A paragraph starts here, ends here. An image starts here and ends here. I've been doing the markup. I want to do the HT part of it, hypertext. I want to link from this document to another document. We have a tag for that. We're going to wrap the A tag around the text that I wrote. Start the link here and the link there. Well, it doesn't even say link. Uh, wouldn't it be obvious if it was called link? That would be too obvious, so they didn't do it. So it's not a link. It's not the link tag. It's the A tag. And sometimes these, link, these tags will make sense. Paragraph, image, A tag. What does that stand for? This is an anchor. Well, that doesn't make sense. Link? Yeah, it's an anchor. That's the old terminology for it. This is going to be an anchor for me to go from this document to another document. And then I also need, well, where am I going? This is going to act like an anchor. I like to remember it as an active link. Maybe remember it that way. A for active link. I, I don't know where to go to. Well, I need an attribute. And in this case, it's an attribute of href. Yes, you're going to just need to memorize some of these things by rote. This is just the way it is. This is when the language was invented in 1989. This is how they said this is how it'll be. This is how it is. You need source for an image. And you need href, a hypertext reference for this anchor tag, a link. So what? where should we link it to? I think I heard someone say vmcinc.net. Yep, exactly. Within the quotes, the website. Visit his website. This will be an A tag, an active link with a attribute of href taking us to the website. Result 
is I see the the text at the bottom there and it's got the underline like I might be used to and it looks like an active link and I put my mouse on it it looks like it's clickable I click it and it goes back to my website that's the HT of HTML this that we're creating here this sounds hyperbolic but it revolutionized the world what you're writing right now changed the world and it sounds way too like hyperbole but think about it uh, you do your online banking you chat with friends and family you keep up to date with them and share pictures all on websites and now as we're getting more onto devices well I'm gonna visit my bank's website I'm gonna visit my Facebook website all of that is this code all of that uh, is a language that was invented that was given away for free it wasn't locked down it wasn't copyrighted and all of that it was given away for free for anyone to use and improve and such and it has changed the world communication banking entertainment and it's free and uh, relatively easy to learn and could be very powerful the more you learn of it so uh, extra credits anyone know the name of the person that invented HTML that's right you get 10 victor points good job <laughs> 1,000 of them equal one real point so Tim Berners-Lee I can write a comment over here factoid Sir Tim Berners-Lee invented HTML in approximately 1989 as a student. He was a student in a European university uh, or a, a research facility, CERN, and uh, he had an idea for his like final thesis or whatever. What if there's a way to connect one computer screen to another computer screen? He actually got the idea from a book from like the 18th century um, about uh, there was a book that it was kind of like a choose your own adventure book where you read a page and it says if you want to do this go to that page if you want to do this go to that page um, it was an old old European book he said why can't we do that on a computer so he set us he set uh, about to create HTML which is based on other things but he then put it together he turned it in as his final project and such and changed the world short answer and eventually got knighted by the Queen and he was in the Olympics remember the London Olympics uh, he is uh, he came out in the London Olympics and he wrote some HTML code and I think it even said hello world in big bright letters on the big screen and such uh, so what we're writing here was invented 30 years ago put out there for free and we're using it as uh, our stepping stone to make apps and the result is a website a very basic website that adheres to the uh, standards of modern web uh, web coding um, and this is right after our break this is then our basic part where we're then going to add a little style change colors put a drop shadow uh, make it look interesting and then we'll have a little bit of time to also do a little JavaScript so on day one we're just going to do a little quick overview of all the three languages and as the course goes on we'll get into all the details so let's take another little break uh, we'll be back uh, in 10 minutes and we'll keep coding